Namaste. Welcome everyone to Satsang this morning. Beautiful morning. Good to see you all. And very good. Very good. Oh, hands up. <laughs> okay. Uh, please come first, yeah? You're limping? What happened to you? My body just. Uh, this is like chronic thing. It's what happened? Chronic thing in my Cro- body. Chronic thing? Yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Uh, yeah. um, I wanted to come because uh, you said that it's good to push through. Mm-hmm. When, uh, yeah, we don't feel so much, and uh, also, so because of this thing, for example, mm-hmm. yeah, but there's so much joy anyway. Mm-hmm. It's, it doesn't matter, and uh, I just want to say that I'm here for this, and uh, I'm so happy to be here, mm-hmm. and uh, there's so much joy, so so much joy in my heart, mm-hmm. and. Uh, yeah. I don't want to talk too much, but uh You haven't. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> There's something you really would like to share. Yeah, yeah. yeah but so mm. yeah, I just want to say that it works, Guruji. Mm? It really works. Mm-hmm. It works. What works? This this works. Just I just am. And that's it. Uh, and it's just uh, this joy and peace here. And, yeah. and I, can I say something happened this night? Okay. Uh, it's a bit weird, but so I woke up in the middle of the night. I was sick. I felt like throwing up. But there was still this peace inside. Mm-hmm. And like there is, n- there isn't this one who is fighting with life anymore so much in here. Mm-hmm. So much peace and joy. And so I didn't want to wake people up. So I went walking in the forest, and uh, so I was walking and throwing up, but it was so nice. <laughs> and Who says things like that? So, so, much, so much joy and peace, yes. even this. It was, it was really it was even beautiful, it was just yeah. it was looking at the stars and throwing up. <laughs> Well, that's the first time I have to say because, um, and it's wonderful, you know, yeah. because uh, we have heard things, similar things, not quite as profound as what you have <laughs> shared, but we have had people speak about it, you know, that even in the midst of um, uh, challenges sometimes yeah. and even painful moments and so on, they happen inside a greater joy. Yes. yes. Hmm? And so there's space for them also to yes, come, exactly. to come, to come up, to go, and still uh, the, they come and go, but the underlying joy that housed them is remain unshakable. So this is the place that you are <laughs> so happy about, yes. that even such things, amongst unpleasant things, vomiting is uh, rates quite highly, <laughs> because I don't think anybody enjoys vomiting. We enjoy the after vomit; is very, very. The relief of it, but you say even during vomiting. Yeah, it's I'm nice. looking at the sky. <laughs> it's wonderful. It's a beautiful testimony. Very good. <laughs> yeah. Very good. Yeah, and everything is just a gift like this in yes. life. Like there is, there isn't really enough in something that is wrong in the, in, the, in this way. Like everything yeah. is a, just a blessing. Yes. Yeah. But there is no one in here who is just yeah. Yeah, and that is why. That is why, because it's really the person sense that often is full of complaints and resistance, and we can see that even things that would ordinarily have been, you know, assumed or just um, automatically read as being bad and bad luck and horrible things, when the mind is pure, 
or the ego sense is not presiding anymore. These things are transformed into multivitamins for the spirit. It's like you you transform something that because it's not in the thing itself, but in the the tendency to interpret it negatively that gives off the bad smell. Now that uh, somehow the ego is not the presiding deity, you see, everything becomes lighter. And even in such a thing like you mentioned, like feeling sick and you know all of this, you know, it becomes much more bearable. Things can pass because the underlying state is unchanging. That root or base state remains constant. The other things come and go. Beautiful things and ugly things, they come and go. So this is very nice. Nice start to satsang today. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. But we don't have to keep it up. We can just be honest and we can go through. But very, very thank you good. so much. Thank you. And thank very you good. that I can be here around and uh, mm. very good. Uh, thank you, Guruji. Very good. Thank you. Good. <coughs> Somebody say. Okay. Namaste. Namaste. <coughs> I have to expose some resistance. Um, mm. I feel like I've been protecting it and concealing it for a while, and it's allowed to build up. Mm. Um, and it normally comes in the form of either falling asleep at the invitation, not understanding your words directly, like loads of head noise, or just loads of ways. Um, what is the resistance? It feels it's more energetic. It's just something that doesn't want me to, or mm. doesn't allow me to listen to yes. the truth or to, to yes. God. Yes. I wonder why. Why would something not support your mm, the very reason why you come here, why you came here? No? Which is I would put it amongst the highest uh, wish or desire or goal in the human kingdom, which is to come to your completeness, uh, to awaken to the God nature within yourself, no? What could possibly be getting in the way, and why? You see, now we spoke about this on so many occasions, no? That within this system, in the the system of a human being, there are these forces, like something that um, these two forces it appears, it appear, no? One that is uh, uh, seem to. Um, pull our attention or keep the attention in our bodily existence and upon our person and the conflicts and the things about life generally in a lowly way and there's another force inside to evolve and to be, to improve to grow more towards the natural attraction to the to the lightness of being and to become happy and peaceful and you see and uh, so now you speak of resistance. Where would you put that in these two polarities? It would be the thing that is trying to keep you in the in the state of being a personal and you know in in resistance and disagreement and you know you know not feeling tired of when it comes to you know, coming to satsang and stuff like this. No, you you so you see that. And I spoke about it and say. That these forces are only um, uh, can only continue playing, and they can only attack the idea you have of yourself, your self-image, and not your true self. 
which you are here to discover. It can only attack the way you feel about yourself. It can only speak to that, and not to your true uh, nature. How to resolve this, you see. And people ask, how can, how can we come out of this state? And I point and say, actually, the truth is, what you are is not in that state. But something that you believe you are is in that state, go to that state. And so, the very resistance, the play of resistance, you are aware of it, even as you speak about it. You know? It may not be here right now, or it can be in a reduced power right now, but there is an awareness of that. Mm-hmm. And the awareness of it is not it, is it? Okay? Is there not similarly an awareness of the one that is suffering it? The sense of the one who is suffering it. And notice this. This these resistance are happening to me. This me factor. Is that not also perceivable? I want to ask this question and I want it to be answered truthfully. The one who feels, you know, this the, my mind is causing so much trouble and I don't know what to do. This voice, this one. Is this one a fact? Is it actually your true self? Is it not that even this identity also uh, also phenomenal, meaning that it is something perceivable? We don't tend to look at that with that kind of scrutiny, because largely we just accept that that's who we are, and you don't question what you think you know. But here we look at it and say, not only the seeming attack, but the apparent one who seems to be attacked also. Is it not also perceivable? This is very important to see. Because right there is where your real work begins, and right there is the possibility of transcending this kind of to change the equation. You see. If I say that this how do you recognize how is the one who is suffering it recognized normally through the feelings that come up and the and the thoughts that happen they're all perceivable but because we were taught to label that 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 strong feeling as yourself we embraced that and we never doubted it so you are presenting that that is what is affected by all these things. My mind comes, and then when it comes, it comes as a form of resistance, and I am not able to focus on your words also. On anybody else's words, maybe it's fine. But when you speak, the blah 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 sorry, you can't hear. You come to listen to the invitation. What's happening? And to whom? So it is as though we are not somehow recognizing and honoring the consciousness or the awareness which is subtler than both the person and what the person is suffering from or enjoying. And you are called to look like that. And normally there is resistance at this type of calling, because nobody is asking you to do this. No one is asking, you know, but you are aware of this. The feelings that come, and even the one for whom they come, and that one states, it keeps on changing. But something watches from a place of unchangefulness. Can you relate to that? Is it, is it the way that you are, you are functioning? Are we functioning from the perspective, from the place, from the position of consciousness yet? Or is it still that we are fighting in the dark as a person, you see? I want to know that. This is why I ask some of the members of the Sangha, what are you doing with these teachings? Is it rehearsed? Is it just a kind of mental conviction? Or is it active? Is it alive for you? Because I would assume, if I could say that, no, that you have already been shown hmm, and have the capacity within you to bring a chaotic state of thinking 
back into the silence of your being, by yourself. So what happens when these states are playing? Isn't there already a suspicion, but this is another sneaky play, it cannot be, it's not true. Or do we just go along with it and cooperate with the state? Now we hear someone who just said, it works, it works, it works. Can you say, it works, it works, it works? Or is it the mind that works and works and works? What's happening right now? Um, right now I'm checking in. In your presence there's obviously peace. Um, and the, the, the guidance to observe observe something with detachment normally um, brings a chaotic state of mind into silence. Uh, it's just when there's identity with something, then when there's identity with something, you say, yeah, oh, yeah. with the play, yeah, then these things can. Mm. So when. Identity springs up with what's going on around. Are you not able to perceive that, even without effort? Don't you just know this? I'm, I'm asking. You see, do we have to work at figuring out is this a kind of play, or do you not intuitively, spontaneously uh, know that again it's a kind of a mind attack? And a mind attack upon who and upon what? You see, this is the power of self-inquiry. And it works. It is like standing in front of a mirror and observing the reflection of your face. Have you ever gone in front of a mirror and there is nobody there? No reflection. In the same way, when looked at earnestly, in the way that I'm pointing out, it always reflects what is true, or what is untrue. You can say, well, something can look and say, yes, but I can perceive this. When you look in the mirror, a phenomenal mirror, that which is reflected in there, is it you in your entirety? Even you know the reflection is not you. We have to launch that, we have to hit that place. You see, right now, energetically, I don't feel that you're in a state to be guided in that way, using the mind in a way, because somehow it's, you know. I would more incline to say to you, just don't hold anything at all. Don't try and hold on to or control anything at all right now. You see? More than to try and direct your attention. If I start to tell direct your attention, someone else is going to make use of that more than you. Because at the moment, uh, you might be experiencing some kind of paralysis where you are not able to follow guidance. So the easiest thing would be just to say, just don't hold on to anything at all right now. Even the memory of what you struggled with, just leave everything. Try and just be entirely empty. We can do it, it's not difficult. Let go. Don't be a container of any thought, any memory, any concepts. How long will it take? One minute, two minutes? Instantly, few seconds, to just don't be holding anything. No question, no self-assessment, nothing of memory. Is possible for you? And keep whatever you whatever springs up in your mind, just for the moment. Don't uh, purchase. Don't hold on to anything at all. And any of you can do this, in fact. It's a very simple and immediate way. Just let go of don't hold any shape or any intention. 
for now. If you, if it were possible to be completely without holding on to anything, don't uh, assess or evaluate or judge or keep or throw anything at all. They leave, just leave everything at all. Who is going to do it to give me to respond to my, my next question? The one who will follow what I've just said, you can take my next question. Leave all of that. Don't hold anything at all. Now is my question. Are you not still here? If you could take everything out that you can perceive that come to mind or memory, everything out. Delete, 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 delete. Until there's nothing left to delete. Nothing, no data, nothing at all to delete. Nothing. What is here that cannot be deleted? That even the deleter is deleted. What remain here? Can anything remove it? Even an atom bomb. Can anything remove that? I'm asking you. No. You. There's space. There's space. Uh, is space answering? Is space answering? My question is space saying there is space. What is it that's even perceiving space also? Suppose even space could be deleted. Are we only now in the realm of imagination, or are we actually still here? Still here. Right. As what are you here? Life. Life is also perceived, watched, observed, felt, tasted, experienced. By what? Can you be one with your answer? Or is that also a thought? If you say there is no answer, what knows that? I don't need an answer. You must be the answer. But not personally. If I say, not personally, you, but not personally you, then what is remaining then? Please don't answer. I will not accept it. Just reflect. If everything can be put somewhere else or deleted, hmm? Everything, everything, including finally the deleter itself, self destructive, it's gone. What remain? Reflect. Can any concept convey that? Have you come this far or this near? Is this that I'm speaking about? Is it near? Near to what it can be? This, this what I'm speaking. Is it other than the essence of what you are, 
Who are you? Is this personal? Is it an idea? Is it the fruit of imagination? No. This is the fruit of your satsang. Is it a belief? Can anything be in resistance to this? Does it mean anything? Something is resisting this. Who cares? What is its result? Oh, something is agreeing with this. Who cares? What is the result? Are my words offensive? Defensive. It is there before even the one who looks in the mirror. Is it an abstraction? And is it significant? Yes. This I will allow. I may continue and push significant for who, but I say this I will allow for the moment. To come to the seeing, have I thrown magic powder over you? Have I rubbed vanishing cream on you? Is it not with your own discernment. Please, you are in the seat now, you must speak. Stand in the authority of your own seeing. It can't be denied. Now we may say, nevertheless, it cannot be denied. No? Nevertheless, Mr. Mind is still which means what for you? Um, who are you, by the way? You reported that that cannot be denied. Meaning, we cannot refute it, we cannot say, but it doesn't exist. Who are you then? Where must you be to affirm or deny the existence of that? Can you be other than that? Can you be looking at that which is uh, inscrutable and limitless and say, yes, it is limitless? from outside. Where would this voice come from also, to testify to the unity and the limitlessness? Am I speaking too fast or going too far this morning? Did you come to find out something else? Because the mind will say, yes, you know, that, that is the highest. But let's get back to reality. There are things to do, places to go, people to meet, money to be made. Time is money. 
To whom does it speak? Watch. Now, there is a tendency to listen like this. And at the end of formal satsang, we go out and you have your breakfast or whatever it is. Hmm? And it's like that was just something we did in the mandir. We talked about this thing. Hey, hey what's for what's for dinner? This is mind. While you're having breakfast, it's one thing. What's for lunch? While you're eating lunch, what's for dinner? And why this play? It seems to distract you from this instant, from this now. And I'm talking about a now which is not a quality of time. When you say that even if you can, I don't know if, I don't know if you even confirm, that even space is also perceived, space being the most subtle, of what we may classify as phenomenality, I mean, it is perceivable. When you are in the position to even assert that space itself is perceivable and perceived, who or what are you? And did you just become that? You see, we could stop satsang right here. If the earnestness, the openness, the honesty of recognition became priceless for you. In the Bhagavad Gita, at the very beginning of Bhagavad Gita, it said that uh, two armies were just facing each other. The horns have been blown. We are ready to charge. The, the war is about to start. Can you imagine such a moment? How much adrenaline, how much testosterone, how much tension is about to collide into something. And right there, Arjuna had satsang with Lord Krishna. Krishna did not say to Arjuna, it's a very tense moment for satsang. If we survive, Let's go down to Goa and meditate in on the beach in Arambul. And I'll have the time and the space to speak to you about heavenly things. Right there he spoke something. And you know what? In almost the first few words and the opening words of Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna spoke the truth. That which exists cannot cease to exist, and that which does not exist it can never ever be real. That which exists cannot die, it is uncreated, it cannot be burnt. Is timeless. But those words were not understood in the heart of Arjuna, because his mind was still very active. His sense of person, perhaps in that moment, was too strong to really embrace, to, to swallow, to digest and assimilate the power of those words. They were enough 
the whole Bhagavad Gita was encapsulated in those few sentences. But then Lord Krishna had to uh, expound and to explain and to stretch it out, so that Arjuna's mind could comprehend. And I feel even at the end of Bhagavad Gita, I don't think Arjuna understood. What we have just pointed to now, hmm? and that I ask, can you confirm this? Was not some sacred cluster of concepts. It was an intuitive recognition and unity with what you have discovered. And yet we will return with our attention to mind and to our person. And I don't even want to say that you do that. It's not that you do you who do it. It appears as though the momentum of mind activity and the persistence of identity and the habit and reflex for the attention to go back to the last meal in memory arises and is also perceived from that absolute place which remains untouched. But when the attention goes again to phenomenality, it seems to bring up and resurrect the corpse of personhood, and it again appears like a living entity. Is this too much for you, though, to hear that? And it is as though we are re-experiencing. It is not really the past. The past is gone, just like a cloud that appears and is gone. It is gone forever. Not that particular cloud will come back. Something like it may come back. And that mood is past. But the mind is trained to somehow simulate that it has come back again. It is not it's come back again. But a habit to give the same reading from the same place hmm, reappears and is perceived by that which is constant, but not acknowledged. You don't have to grasp what I said just now. Have we dealt with it? You see. What would be dealing with it if I could say what I've said to you, and you grasp? Ah, yes. Now you apply. You may feel it's 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 a little bit difficult to do this in front of everyone. No, you're in front of me. Everyone is behind there. You see, or you may say, "No, okay, fine. I I, I will just uh, go and sit with this, and this is fine also. It's fine also." Enough have been uh, shared that you can now go and work with this again to again apply the same pointer and see: Did it work on the first time and not the second time? Did it work the first two times and not the third? Did the mirror made a perfect reflection on the first three occasions? On the fourth, it gave you someone else's face. Why do we need to keep looking? Because somehow we learned many bad things through repetition and habit. And similarly, we are reminded of what the truth is also through repetition. It's not that oh again I have to tell you. no no, it's that uh, that's what it takes to be reminded and something again misinterprets or feels a bit distracted and again you're reminded and reminded.
so usually when these these moments to check in to confirm who I am they come when seen from the true position like a cathartic reaction would happen mm -hmm. normally yawning or something yeah and uh, this happens very quite quite a lot mm -hmm. and that's that's when I know I I'm confirming myself from this yes even the confirming of the self is watched in the self. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm not saying it shouldn't happen. I'm just pointing. Are you still with me when I say this? Hmm. Let both happen. There is a natural uh, movement of confirming. Yes, yes, I'm confirming. Yes, it cannot be. This because of course it can be seen, and I cannot depend on the thing I'm seeing because any moment it, it shape shifts, and any minute it turns into something else. And if my attention kept looking at it, it keeps being transformed. What is there to hold on to? It's not a reliable thing, and this is also perceived. And the one who is perceiving it uh, with identity is also perceived. Did we make that step? Have we come to this step? Sangha, yes. did we come to this step? Because I want to know, do we come to this step? Or do you just try to get rid of the offending uh, component? You see? Yes, my mind is doing it now, and you see this, and then you feel, oh, I feel better now. OK, thank you. It's not resolved. It's just a painkiller. It's not resolved. You follow? Uh, for this reason you come here, not for a surface plaster to put on some rash, or some ointment to rub on some rash. You see. Now I said something, and I'm going to take the risk of saying it again. No. And uh, because I said one time. This is a hospital where we don't cure the patients; we kill them. Okay, okay. I have to explain because easily misinterpreted. What it means is that um, A ghost has come to the doctor's office to be treated for anorexia. And the doctor is thinking how to treat it. And the ghost is saying, Look, you got to help me. Or I'll die. <laughs> you got the joke? <laughs> okay. Thank you. We move on for that. You I've told you something now, so now you just again you come and confirm and I want to talk to you maybe later on about something. Okay. Good. Oh. Can I speak with you for a moment? Normally, I get uh, speechless when I, whenever I come in your presence, I, in a good way. 
I saw so much silence and joy is there, I am satisfied. And uh, I don't feel so much to speak, but I felt that I have to come up and... Uh, because for a while I have been here in Sahaja, so actually I want to just report that I, how it is for me or how it has been. Thank you, Guruji. <laughs> <laughs> Should I let him off? <laughs> it is good. Um, I feel, I feel you. Hmm? It is good. I am very happy that you stood up today and just come even to say this thing, you know, because um, I would like that you don't create things to say, of course not like that, but uh, even to spend more time um, with me, sometimes I see you, you know, and I want to grab you and say, "Jump in my buggy, I want to go for a little ride or something." No, and I may do that, but uh, we will see because sometimes it starts like that where we feel we don't really have anything much to say. And people have said to me like this, "I don't really feel I have nothing to say. I think everything is just so wonderful and like that." You know, I say, "Okay." And then uh, they may say, well, there is a little something. <laughs> and the book comes out of it. It can be like this, and not no expectation, but we don't know. Sometimes until you start to share something, you think, you know, yes, yes, and I have time for you. But thank you for stepping up today. Thank you. Okay. <coughs> yeah. Okay, you come, you come, you come. No, 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 no. Behind Prama, you. But you put your hand up, yes, but something, put the hand, and then I say you, and it goes. Hmm? So you are next. Okay, you are now. Okay. I just had to come. Okay. <coughs> the last time that we spoke, you asked me, "Am I satisfied?" Mm-hmm. And I'm not satisfied until it's finished. Yes. Until what is finished? This is what I don't know, and it's burning so much. Mm. And I know the very first ever retreat that I came here, the same burning on the first day happened. Mm. And it tried to get me away. It tried to? It tried to stop me from coming and to mm. not be here. And this was. So, was the burning time. good or bad? At that point, I just wanted to be rid of it. So, mm. you know. It's the just, burning is good. <laughs> but the mind says, mm-mm, no good. First thing, you see? The burning itself is something. Sometimes what the burning can remove things, in, in one hour or three hours, that would replace uh, six months of sadhana. Can I say like this? Yes, that burning not given to the mind, just <laughs> okay. May remove and can burn things, as I said, you know, uh, step into this fire 
of self-discovery. This fire will not burn you. It will burn only what you are not. If something is just, we don't know. When what's cooking? What's burning? A lot of mind garbage is kind of burning up, and we don't have to have conversation about it. It's not a conversation. It's just, a, you know. So what to do when such things come? Uh, say thank you, thank you, Lord of the Universe, for picking me up. Leave nothing unburnt. Or the mind will say, Get out of here! Get out of here! And that burning, it can be quick, you know? Why it's extending so long? Because of the relationship that, you know, it's like this. The fire is going. You see that sometimes people put a candle on and they blow. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> Come back up again. You know this kind of candle? <laughs> Check candle. Happy birthday to you. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Boom, we come again. <laughs> Are we one of these candles? <laughs> Something <laughs> coming up. Why it keep coming up? So I want it to stop, we say. We want I want it to stop. But it won't stop. Then what to do? Then you stop. You want the fire to stop? Okay, I'll burn enough. Okay, bye, I'm going to burn someone else over there. No, you stop. What does it mean? Hmm? Because it is burning because something takes it to be real. And something is feeling compassion for the troubles and what is happening to me. And, and this is exactly fuel, more fuel for this fire. But it's burning, and you should say thank you. Watch what, watch that which is not burning. What is it that's not burning, that that cannot be burnt? What a moment! You see? But let the burning be. <coughs> burning is God's free. Um, Freebie for you. Hmm? So now you say the burning start again somehow, or some did you say like this or? Yes, it it's um, it was um, yeah, it just felt like a an attack, you know, like a. Yeah. Please, um, let's slow it down frame by frame. Tell me what an attack feels like. Just take me through it. When we say we are, you know, I'm, I'm feel under attack. Mm-hmm. Usually, the, when I feel under attack, I want to avoid it. Yes. And I want to hide from it and just yes. go around it. So let's go to the next point. The you who want to hide from it. The you, because this is this is this is where, if we can get this resolve. Nearly everything is resolved because of this deep uh, belief and, and, and in, in personhood. It is very powerful because it, uh, it is felt. It is like in that moment, it is in the lungs, it is flowing in the veins. What greater evidence? It is happening to me. It is happening to our self-image and to the idea and the way that we think and who we think we are. It is happening to that. And of course, the natural reflex is to block that or to just get away from this. You see. Mm. But I'm asking you to watch this and to watch what is perceiving this, which is not in that fire. It's you know? completely out of it. Yes. Yeah. Completely out of it. Yes, yes. And you are where? I am that. Yes. Is it a shared reality? No. We have a dynamic expression. I don't want yes. to deny. I'm here, we're sitting, we're speaking like this. 
there's a sense of you and I and so on. That is our dynamic functioning. And there's things to 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 be harmonized in this field also. I'm only saying, let's uh, bring you back to the fundamental understanding, experiential understanding, and from here, your dynamic expression will be more easily coming into harmony, without force, without construction, just by the grace of your seeing. Things begin to be seen in the proper alignment. Your position has shift from the person into the state of presence, and that's already that's already it. You see, now the pain may go on for a bit. It's like we use the example that if there's a fan is going on in this room, and uh, it's a bit chilly, and then we flick the switch off, the blades don't stop immediately. They may keep going, but the power is already cut. So gradually it's slowing down, and it will stop. You don't have to watch and wait and hope. It's going to, it is cut. Where will you cut this? Because even though you cut what it means to cut, to recognize that, wait a second, that is still the play going on, but it's not being fed. The fire cannot keep burning without the fuel, and the fuel is your attention, identity, belief and interest. Now that doesn't go out because it is conserved in your place of consciousness. You stay there. Is this is this an unreasonable thing to point to as a power base? Your power base is unreasonable or reasonable? No, it's yeah. <laughs> because I want to know if it's really if it's if it, you can connect with what I'm speaking. Yes. At a functional level, that you can yes. say, "Yes, I applied it, and that works every time." Yes. You see, it works because there is a reflex, you know, that seems to happen when somehow I am functioning as person only, or I believe I am that, and so that becomes all the experience is registering to the person only. Whereas when when it is recognize or shown that the person also is a cloud passing not just the person's feelings but the person also is a cloud passing watched from a deeper place and you can recognize the deeper place of looking and confirm but it is here i didn't did you create are you imagining this or are you able to profoundly confirm but actually the truer place is here because that's stable and when I'm watching for my true place, is it effortful? Is the seeing, you know, like I'm really trying to, or is it that, you know, for a while it will seem like the mind keeps swinging in and energy seems to get pulled with it for a bit, but somehow that constant place is more recognized somehow, and there it seems to be just emerging with that. And so the oscillations, like I was given the example of the driver when the windscreen wiper is going like this, that comes to an end. Have I merely presented you with a psychological technique? No. no. This is good. No, you very much um, empower the being. Yet you can say that it empowers the being, or that it reveals your inherent power, mm, yes. which we have not really exercised, because the energy has been trapped into the person, yeah. you know, and uh, it cannot it cannot hold the charge in the person. You see, and it's a good thing. Because if the person worked, then you would never wake up. This whole person thing has never worked, actually. The whole thing, oh, we are all these you know, seven and a half billion of us on the planet. It never worked from Adam. It has not worked. It only works when it is combined and merged with heart consciousness. This is the goal of. Uh, all intelligent existence. And by itself, the person is not a stable, reliable state. 
is fluctuating. Find that which is aware of this fluctuation, which itself does not fluctuate. I feel this at a certain point, at a certain stage, that may seem to be, wow, that's a tall order, you know, that's a big deal. Then with a little practice and exercising, it becomes the obvious. It's like the obvious is not obvious until it's obvious. When it becomes somehow through keep checking and checking, it becomes but <laughs> it's the more simple thing. It's like someone teaching you how to breathe. You breathe like take, and people some people have been showing me this also. I'm gonna show you how to breathe. I said, I think after sixty five years I think I got the hang of it actually. <laughs> But if you want to teach me how to breathe more efficiently, I mean, you know, I mean, it's. I'll try. <laughs> and there's a truth in that, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of these things which no doubt will prolong our physical bodies or whatever. I don't know. And I'm not so. I mean, I do enjoy my physical existence also, very much, <laughs> but not that much. <laughs> Bring it down to here, would you? <laughs> Fill it up. <laughs> now let it out. <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. But uh, my point to you is, is, is this thing. We pay attention too much to the feelings in the mind, and so, in a sense, it feels that's where the work needs to be done. And I think, no, yes. you just have to keep discover. Don't try and fix your mind. Just keep recognizing and affirming and confirming your true place, not at the place of the person. First, at the place of the presence, the conscious presence, where witnessing of all of this takes place automatically. And gradually that acknowledgement, that confirmation deepens, and then the ghost story is coming to an end. As long as the body is here, the vital force and consciousness is here, the potential for thought activity will manifest. The possibility of experiencing, you know, uh, a personal identity will come, and it's 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 okay. It's the nature of things. It means that we don't fall into complacency, and so that the the practice of exercising your discernment. God keeps it with us that. We never just say, "Yeah, I've done it," and you know, I'm sit back in the hammock of my life and just it's done. No, something is uh, present and beautiful because of this. Hmm? Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, I said you should come now, no? Okay. I found it quite difficult to be here. And, uh, mm. and in general, or in front of the microphone? No, uh, like in this outset. In, in, the, in this moment. Yeah. Okay. But also, like every time there is satsang, I, or that I see you, I feel comfortable to crack a joke or to be funny or to just be with you. And but I feel something afraid to report what's happening here you know? mm. and not that it's it's bad mm. or that it's not working it's just something fears that is not trusting that it's good enough to present to you or 
that it should be better or I don't know, not even better, but it mm. it just uh, there is not that trust there. Though there is still trust because something feels inside that it's reborn, like I'm going now back home, but I feel I'm going like completely a new being, like I don't recognize the one I left behind when I came here. Mm. And um, it just feels a completely different round that I'm at at the moment. Mm. Very good. Very good. It's not good to know too much about yourself. <laughs> there must be an unpredictable element in us. We must not be too predictable. You see? But don't try to be unpredictable. <laughs> when we are empty, uh, uh, that, that, that potential prevails. It is like you are living in your own self-discovering. You don't know what you are going to say. What your response will be. But something is very comfortable, because it is very unlikely that you are going to freak out. <laughs> OK? It is not going to happen. Something knows that, that you are here and uh, can uh, be in the presence of whatever shows up, because something deeply has confirmed already, even before a thing happened, that it will be phenomenal. Can I speak on behalf of you like that? Yes. Yeah. Before it happened, whatever happened, even if you don't know what's going to happen, it is phenomenal. It is a thing that will pass, good or bad. It has no everlasting uh, quality. It will come and it will go. In the presence of that which never arrived, the uncreated Self. The more we meditate upon this, it has a power that we cannot describe, contrary to what we may expect. The less there is of you, the fuller there is of you. The less there is of our Self personally, the greater there is of our Self universally. And that is experience, not merely some projection or some fantasy. Because here in Sahaja, we are the experience of our Self. So whatever will be, Wherever your steps physically take your form physically, you are always here. A here beyond place or geographic location, and a now beyond time. Don't speak this, because few there are that can comprehend what this means. and move in that. Because apart from that, there is no particular you to know, or really worth knowing, actually. We all live with our own invented versions of each other. And as I believe Afiz say, the only thing that 
separates you from me is my idea of you. So you are in a wonderful place in yourself, not knowing what is to come. You may even experience nothing came. Just I am, wherever I am, wherever I am, I am. But don't say it. It's only a confirmation in the silence of your being. And outwardly, what needs to be done seems to happen as is appropriate to the needs of the moment, you will observe and gain the correct confidence from seeing that your life is simply unfolding. Even your words that you did not know before, yourself may be the first time hearing it for your own self. But don't expect that. Don't expect anything. That's the best. Just be. There is no need for one who is awakening to rehearse any moves in life, I will tell you. And then I am here for you to then come back to me and say, You were wrong. I need to rehearse. You know, seeing my uncle. Then we can go and look at that together. Your best will be a surprise unto yourself. You will be fresh and refreshing. So I feel very comfortable with you going anywhere. As I said before, from your heart shines the light of the world. Don't let your mind cover it. How it can cover it? By giving attention to that based upon personhood. There is going to be and coming very strongly for many, you know, this intolerance with cooperating with this notion of herself as a person only. It can be there superficially, but when the sunlight of real understanding come, like sometimes when the day is here and the sun is here, sometimes we can still see the moon at the same time when the sun is here. But nobody writes poetry to the moon in the presence of the sun. So our personal idea of ourself can be there operating superficially. And it's all right that people outwardly take you to be the same person. Yes, yes, and you speak the same way, it's okay. Because we're not here to demonstrate and to advertise yourself as an awakened being. Forget about it. Just move. And others will somehow bathe in the light of your presence, or not. You said yourself, the one you came here as is no longer here. Where is it? Where is it kept in the meanwhile? Well, it doesn't exist. And if you are a person and you merely have upgraded your personhood, that too will not last.
Only that in you which cannot be worked on will last. It can only be discovered. So what an adventure your life will be. The one who does not expect anything, that one's being fills everywhere. So much, I know you know this. And yes, I do, and I love you so much too. And there are no words, and these days I've discovered the notebook that I bought in London when I first met you, and the first page there was how did I feel after my first meeting with you, and it did not change actually. It was like a tremendous love. It's just a recognition of of the love, yeah. the love I see in you, I see in me. It, it's a tremendous love, and it's just a tremendous change, and it completely changed my life, and actually not my life, but my existence. Just feels like this life is just the best life I ever had. Since now, <laughs> this way, for the one who is awakening to themselves, every day becomes your best day. Every moment, your best moment, even if there's pain. Your being has become like the Philosopher's Stone. You are transforming everything into the Divine. And they were always the Divine. But your seeing has become returned to you the Divine. And this is why I say that uh, you are the seeds of awakening in a sleeping world. Why sleeping means when we are not aware of who we truly are. It is called sleeping. Eyes wide open, but sleeping. And even in accepting and pursuing for deeper clarity is awakening. Thank you. I want to say that uh, that since you since you guided us last year to watch the eye, 
and I'm following it and I can see that that is still present here. And, uh, that what is still present here? This this eye when I when I look at it, it it's just a it's like a sensation which is getting weaker and weaker every time I yeah. I'm observing it and. Uh, Yes. Uh, the I as what is important to the I because the sense or the intuition I am that intuition even before it is turned into words the sense I am is the first bar before any other thought can appear that intuition must already arise. The knowing I am. I consciousness am. Am means to exist. It did not need uh, another to say I. It is the first. But only after the sense I am is there. Can the sense you come? The you cannot come before I, because the sense of you is in relation to the sense I. We are here to look. When you speak about eye watching, it means to look what is I, because it's a shape shifter. One, I say that what God say, I am. The devil also say, I am. All beings have the feeling, the intuition, I am. A mosquito feel, I am. The germs and the worms feel, I am. It is the name of consciousness. I am awake to myself, I am. Then you are asked to watch the I. So if I am, what can take the the, the, the advice, watch the eye. If the eye is also perceivable and knowable, by what is it watched? When, when, why was it said like that also? Because uh, we speak like this, you know. I went to this place and I believe this and I don't like this, and we speak very freely, and no one interrupt. Yes, I don't like this, and I believe this, and I don't like this, and I don't believe this, and I, I, I. And you are told, watch this I. Not only that, and find out, is it personal or impersonal, when it is expressed. I don't like these kind of people. Is that personal or impersonal? You see? And if it is personal, huh? okay, what is watching it? That which watches it and is aware of it is that personal. Watch that too. And gradually, like this, you are catching how often, when the term or the feeling I arises, it is given to a person. So then it indicates that most of our functioning in our encounter with other beings is based upon separate personhood and ego. You see the point when I am speaking like this. And when you can see it clearly, then alone you may begin to recognize it is not there's a deeper wish to not just live in such a superficial mode where everything is related to from personhood. And now by the very fact that the person itself is a mode that can be observed, already indicate there must be a deeper consciousness that observed this. And just being aware of that begins to widen your scope. It already is, even before you turn that and say, Okay, what can I do? Even just the understanding itself is transforming your inner environment and the way in which you function. You see. Then you say, I showed last year I called you for this eye watching. This year you say, now standing here, you say, Yes, I can observe him and now speak. And this eye is what? 
that is being observed? Well, uh, well, I, I just I just find this sensation that it's like a it's like a old memories, images, many things, and, and it's just I cannot find this this identity that 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 I'm labeling as I. So it's it's yes. It is created every time you believe it. When is the birth of the I? Every time it arises and it believed in is there. Unless the mind as I says this thing happened or that thing happened. Experientially, nothing happened. What is happening apart from subjective perception? How you feel about something. Can that be presented as the fact? Isn't life already sharing so many examples? If we take a good example, this country football, we go to football much. The game is whatever it is. But there are hundred commentators, all reporting it differently. So who is making the best and most accurate report? Depending on what side you're on. It's the same with life. Can we rely upon our individual perception and call it a fact? Because a fact means it's irrefutable. So it is a fact for you and it's a fact for me. Or are we saying if there are seven and a half billion human beings together, there are seven and a half vers- seven and a half billion versions of the one fact? Or seven and a half billion facts of perceiving? There is the act of perceiving. But there's not a fact that what you're perceiving is truth. Then we must change position to the perceiver then. Is the perceiver true? Not just what the perceiver perceive, but the perceiver itself is it true? And what is able to observe the perceiver and evaluate the credibility of the perceiver also? Where does this lead? When you contemplate in this way. All things return to silence. The source from which they spring. When we acknowledge this in the heart, then you begin to observe the natural cosmic unfolding of this world of appearances and you will not be troubled by it. In fact, you will enjoy. Knowing that what you are really enjoying is the dance of consciousness, our own play. Have you confirmed so far like that? Yes. Uh, mm-hmm. First, the space opened up yes. inside, yes. and uh, and it and it didn't go away. Yes. And whenever this person still comes back and arises as as I, and I'm identifying with it as a as, a, as an old habit, it takes much less and less time to. To, to see it as unreal by the by your grace and by the self inquiry yeah. yeah. and by the can the perceiver be perceived yeah because uh, these these are I noticed that these are very very important tools yes. to, to they use. reveal a very noble and stable and unchanging power and presence I don't know what the word to call hmm? that in its presence the changeful hmm, is not so impactful. 
it was only impacting when it was impacting upon the person ah there was pain there's joy there's hope there's aspiration there's healing and so on but that which is is even more subtle than space what can impact upon it and yet at the same time the sense of the person or the sense of our dynamic expression is still active is it an offence or is it in conflict with that which is you find out Ensure or make sure that it isn't that we are not falling for this tendency of the mind, so much so, so to speak, that ultimately wants a conclusion that is dynamic. Do you follow this? I'm going to ask you to stay with me just for a little bit more, so that it check that we are not retaining some ultimate maybe subconscious expectation that the final seeing should be dynamic meaning what should be yeah you know yeah we got it yeah i'm living it man yeah yeah not that because nothing dynamic Hmm? is eternal as a shape as the energy field of the of the real yes a dancing consciousness you can say but as a form it is always in transformation if you know this even intuitively then you can acknowledge uh, your effortless silence. <coughs> silence is not enough as a term to somehow represent that which is. There are no concept that can represent or convey it. That's a help if I say that there are no concepts that can convey the truth. It should help you. Because you know that there is some that which is untouched by concept. Yes or no? Yes. Yeah, thank you. It was before all things. It was before before. I'm going to ask that we just spend just a few moments without words for now. Because what has been shared, the energy, the vibration, the power, the light, the spirit of it, is here. And it is in you, and it is you. But don't identify with any negative states. Don't register them in your being. Because they will agitate and distort the perfect vibration of the of the self.
in manifestation. Though we may be aware of them, do not combine negative states of mind with yourself. Don't let that pure vibration of the sense I am be combined with any concept. And discover that you can function in the most diverse, you can be in the most diverse field and be uncontaminated. Find and recognize that which is uncontaminatable. Don't associate or give over the natural intuition, the sense I am, hmm, to any uh, thought form or personal intention, because it is not personal. The person sense was uh, the early stages of consciousness's manifestation. It must outgrow that limited state. Our being, in its essence, has always been sublime. It was compelled to be associated in personhood, because consciousness, by the will of God, wished to experience these states and to transcend them. It is as though the consciousness creates the sense of a problem in order to have the experience of transcending them. Just like we like to succeed, to expand, to rise, it is the nature of consciousness to transcend the lower states and to transcend ultimately personal identity and personhood. We are now more here in this moment, experiencing more true to our natural vibrational field. It is nothing to hold on to. The flower does not try to hold on to its fragrance. Your silence is not something you are doing. The flower of consciousness is opening, 
where the flower is open, the fragrance will always be there. What you are naturally perceiving now is not a mode of time.
Thank you, everybody. It is a joy inside my heart to see you remembering what you came here for. And not just remembering, but recognizing. I have to step in to, just to be in front of you. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I, I experience uh, there is an emptiness and vastness I have never experienced before. emptiness, that vastness that you speak.
and is speaking of them. And the apparent one who speaks them are one. That vastness, that emptiness, the emptiness beyond the concept of emptiness, the vastness beyond the concept of vastness, the speaking of it, the perceiving of it, the one who speaks it, are one. And it has always been so. But in the field of the dynamic manifested world of uncountable beings, this is the essence and the truth that is the core of their reality. The highest discovery that is possible for sentient beings on this planet. Chiefly, we speak of the human being. Recognizing which automatically blesses every aspect of our dynamic expression. restores the mind to its peaceful origin and state, and reveals and declares the oneness and unity of all things. As inherent in the singular being, which we refer to as God, the Supreme Self. Only here we can say, Only God, only that Brahman Self-Absolute Awareness, all-encompassing, is. There is nothing outside it to exist independent of it. There is nothing apparently existing which has another source but Him. This is the truth. <laughs> and this is uh, that which, if nothing else is discovered, the thing that we were born to discover, apart from which we have no abiding happiness or peace. So veneration and all praise be to God, Alhamdulillah. And we may say veneration to the Supreme Self Consciousness, which is the same thing. Amen.